Hello and welcome. This is podcast number 81 in the listening room. My name is Suzanne Goulain. What you're about to listen to is the audio portion of a webinar I recently conducted called How to Experience More Heightened Joy and Accelerate Your Path with the New Spiritual Energies. And what you're listening to is part one. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to The Listening Room, a spirituality podcast brought to you by SpiritSourceConnect.com. My name is Suzanne Goulet and in each episode I'll be speaking to you about new spirituality and how you can use it to improve your daily life. By offering you insights, tools, and techniques, you'll become more aware of your connection to a higher power and begin to accelerate your path to a life of greater joy, ease, and flow. Enjoy! Hello, hello everybody. This is Suzanne Gooday and I want to thank you so much for coming to this presentation. I'm super, super excited to share with you all of this information that I have put together. It felt like I was putting together a lot of knowledge I've wanted to share with people for a long time and I have been doing bits and pieces for quite some time. And now it's kind of all been put together. So what I'm going to be doing during this presentation is sharing with you a number of things that I have learned and been able to integrate into my life to create a life that is full of freedom and creativity and joy. And it's the result of so much learning and practice over many, many decades and Now it's my ultimate joy just to be able to teach what I have learned. Of course, I don't expect to be able to resonate with everybody. I'm interested in just reaching those people who are seeking just the next right best step for them at this time in their lives. And so let's get started. Okay, so you have decided to come into a webinar called How to Experience More Heightened Joy and Accelerate Your Path with New Spiritual Energies, the new spiritual energies that are coming to earth. And I have been experiencing these and sharing them in group form for over 10 years now, and there is real science behind this and there are real effects and these are things that you can really experience in your life yes we all go through hard times but yes we can also begin to be in the practice of experiencing heightened joy and accelerating our paths and our paths are leading us back home So before we get too deeply into our content, I want to tell you what we'll be covering today because it's very specific and it's all organized and categorized. The first thing we're going to be doing is covering if this webinar is going to be right for you or not. And so you can choose to leave in the middle. That's totally fine with me. I don't have a problem with that at all, but it will be right for you if you're a certain kind of person. So after that, I'm going to cover who I am and what my background is so you know who you're listening to and what I am doing now. Next, I'll be covering what are these new energies that are coming to Earth and why are they coming to Earth now? And then, what does this all mean for you? What does it have to do with you? How does it affect your life? And I'm telling you, it affects your life. A great deal and you're either in resistance against them or you're absorbing them and participating with them and expanding your life there's nothing the universe wants more uh, that God wants more than to give you extraordinarily happy life while you're here so we'll be covering all of that I'm also going to be letting you know what the global energetic downloads are This is a monthly program that I have, and I'll give you more details about what that is and how you can participate. 
And then I'm launching a new monthly group for those who really resonate with the content that's being received and they want to take it to a deeper level and they want to connect with other like-minded individuals. They want to participate in community. They want to get out of the feeling of being alone on their spiritual path. And I am more than happy to facilitate a group like that. I'm also going to be covering how to take this work further and how to work with me privately if that's interested. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that because it's not the purpose of this webinar. But do know that I have um, a constant and a thriving private practice where I see people individually and it's all done over the phone and over the internet. I currently live in Maui and my clients are just about everywhere else but Maui. Very interesting. <laughs> but this is where I have chosen to live. That was my ideal place. That's what I wanted. And here I am. Okay, so let's get going. This webinar is going to be right for you if you've been on a spiritual path for some time. Most of the people I work with, most of the people that I know who come into my circle have usually been on some kind of spiritual path for a few decades even. Some are new, but what I find in common is everyone who resonates with this work is a highly spiritual being. It's something that they keep very private. However, they are walking on this earth knowing that they are spiritual beings more so than others and that they are here to be of service. And the spiritual path is not something that you choose. You will know because it somehow has chosen you. Something in your life may have occurred that woke you up. Something about your life experience brought you to the place of feeling like, I come from someplace higher than what this place is, and I see a lot of problems here. How can I fix them? So the spiritual path chooses you, not you choosing it. Also, you're someone who might know something about certain religions. You might have been brought up in something, whether it be Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Judaism, Native American traditions, any of the Native traditions around the world. You somehow were born in a family or in a community that was already well adept at practicing a faith and a religion that has its roots in antiquity. You have some understandings of that. You also have been a seeker for some time. You're, you're often asking the universe questions, posing questions to put out there, and you're looking for those answers, and very often those answers show up for you. You might wake up one morning and wonder, well, why the heck this? And in the afternoon, somehow the universe has brought you the answer, and this is how you're so sure and aware that you are on a spiritual path. And sometimes life throws you curveballs, and you somehow know this is really horrible. However, somehow it's for your highest good, and you're willing to accept that and seek more answers. Okay, if you've ended up here, it's because you're seeking and you're curious. Or maybe you're just curious you want to kick the tires. In any case, this is right for you. We will see some new ideas being presented here and they can contribute to whatever you're already practicing. I really believe that if you were called to click and answer the invitation and you ended up here, the webinar is right for you. Okay, who I am. Okay, so I was originally born in a very small town in New Hampshire. I went to Catholic schools, and there were nuns, and I uh, was I went to church every Sunday. I come from a family of 10, and we went to church every Sunday at 8.30 Mass, and you know what? I absolutely loved it. I loved the ritual. I loved the community. I loved the tall 
architecture and the stained glass windows in the church, and I loved the Gospels. Mostly I loved the teachings of Christ, and I was fascinated, fascinated by the miracles that he did. And I remember at a certain point in the Mass, Christ said, all these things you shall do and more. And so as a little girl, I believed that. Okay, so we're going to do all these miracles and more. Okay, so when does that start? And I think I remember asking my mother, like, well, Christ was able to walk on the water, and Christ was able to make the crippled person well again. When do we get to do that? And who's doing that? And can we go see them do that? And I think she just raised her eyebrows looking at me and didn't really have an answer. But that's who I was at five years old. Okay. So I left my rural little town upbringing and went to art school, went to film school in New York City. And ever since then, I have been a spiritual seeker. I studied Buddhism in college, and I became friends with people and was kind of adopted by Jewish families and participated in their Friday evenings and other rituals. And I got exposed to a lot of different things. And I always had this impulse inside of me to to keep going, to keep following an inner spirit. There was sometimes things that I wanted to do that my family was really opposed to. They didn't want me to leave New Hampshire. They didn't want me to move to New York City. They didn't want me to study art. They thought all of those things were too far outside the box, and they thought I wasn't going to be safe, and they wanted me to be safe. And I didn't see any danger in those things. And my impulse on the inside was far greater than any kind of resistance from the outside. Do you follow that? Have you ever taken a leap where the impulse on the inside is far greater than all of the resistance you're receiving on the outside? I'm always going to be encouraging that. So I've had multiple careers in the film business, in gemology, in real estate investing. I was an agent in four states for a while before the economic downturn. I've lived in 22 cities around the U.S. and in four countries and spent a good deal of time in Europe. In fact, I lived in Italy for three years and speak French and Italian. All of this is a result of following that inner impulse. So sometime around 1991, someone handed me a book on channeled material. Some of the first books I started reading were by Sanaya Roman. She has a wonderful book called Living with Joy. And then I just poured through all of her books. And I encourage you all to start with her if you're new to channeled materials. But from that point on, I stopped reading anything else. And that's all I've read since then. Okay, so one of the most advanced channeled materials that I came across was A Course in Miracles. So after I had been consuming several series of books of channel materials, like all of the Sanaya Roman series, and then all of the Seth material, which you may be familiar with, by Jane Roberts, and then another series called Right Use of Will, it seems like I was being prepared to be ready to receive A Course in Miracles. So someone handed me the book, and... I was immediately taken by chapter one, which said that all miracles are natural and they're available to everyone. However, a period of purification must exist first. So I immediately started practicing because this had been something that I had been curious about since I was a child. So let me tell you a little bit about The Course in Miracles because it's the foundation of a lot of the work that I do and the programs that I have are a result of my studies of a course and my interest in extending miracles. Okay, the course, it's made up of three books, actually. It's 1,400 pages in total, and it starts with the text, and then there's the workbook for students, which is 365 lessons. You do one lesson a day. And then there's a manual for teachers. So the Course of Miracles was received by this woman, Helen Schuckman, 
and it took her seven years to be receiving this material. Here she is. She was a clinical psychologist at Columbia University in New York City. She was self-described as atheist and Jewish in culture. So she had no predisposed kind of ideas about Christianity. However, the entire course is given to us by Christ. And she describes herself as simply the scribe, having received his words and written them down to collect this. She's a brilliant woman, a very bright light, and she was chosen for this work. These are her original notes that she took in shorthand. Those are all her shorthand notebooks that received the entire course. In fact, those are being rediscovered and poured over There's things that are crossed out and rewritten, and we're trying to get back to the original material of the course because there has been some disputes about the number of times it's been edited. It's been gone through almost four different times over the years, and now that it's celebrating its 50th anniversary, a lot of people are experiencing a revival of the course and want to know the real stuff as it was given to her. She would go into her office and hand over her notebooks or read her notes to her colleague, William Thetford. And there he is. And he would type everything out so that they would have a completed manuscript going from her shorthand notes in her notebooks there to something that was typed out. So this was kind of a dedicated collaboration that they had. Currently, I'm studying this version, which is what is the closest to Helen's original notes. You know, there were some sections and the blue-covered one that were had been taken out because some people thought that people shouldn't know this material. Um, but Christ gave it to Helen, and we want to have everything that she had received. So this is called the Year Text Manuscripts. You can find this on my website and in my shop. I have a recommended reading section. And just bear in mind, it's A Course in Miracles, the Year Text Manuscripts. Year Text means original. So let me read to you the very first pages of A Course in Miracles. This is pertaining because this is the work that makes up all of my work, everything that I do. I still, to this day, am doing a lesson a day and writing about it as well. Okay. Chapter 1, The Meaning of Miracles. There is no order of difficulty in miracles. One is not harder or bigger than another. They are all the same. All expressions of love are maximal. Miracles as such do not matter. The only thing that matters is their source, which is far beyond evaluation. Miracles occur naturally as expressions of love. The real miracle is the love that inspires them. In this sense, everything that comes from love is a miracle. All miracles mean life and God is the giver of life. His voice will direct you very specifically You will be told all you need to know. Miracles are habits and should be involuntary. They shouldn't be under conscious control. Consciously selected miracles can be misguided. Miracles are natural. When they do not occur, something has gone wrong. Miracles are everyone's right, but purification is necessary first. So that was the end of part one. You can proceed to part two. This is Suzanne Goulet, and I want to thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to leave me a comment on the blog section of my website at spiritsourceconnect.com. And while you're there, feel free to sign up for my newsletter and you'll receive a free audio inspirational gift. Thank you.